Hi, Scotty, it's Jonathan. Jonathan, how lovely to hear from you. Jonathan, I'm so sorry. You called last week and we just had oh, such a bad line. Yeah, I do apologise. That's, that's unfortunate when you're travelling around. No, not yeah. your fault at all. Now, Jonathan, um, just for the nation, you are an entrepreneur. So is, he. So is that he. right? An entrepreneur, and uh, that's somebody that makes their own way in the world and does well. And I seem to remember you telling me that you now had several residences worldwide. And the last time we spoke, you were driving a car worth a hundred and sixty thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And are you still on top of your game? Always. You know, you make your own destiny in life, and uh, if you don't have these things, you know, we live in the most fantastic country in the world. Opportunity every day awaits. Now, Jonathan, when you say the most fantastic country, are you talking about Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, or Wales? Well, oh, Jonathan, I see it collectively together. Um, you know, I get interested in each, each of these countries. And, uh, you so know, are you a supporter of the United Kingdom? Indeed, yes. We need, you know, to be honest, Scott, the problem with Scotland is there's too many lazy people. Yes. A uh, hundred, hundred years ago, we had fantastic inventions, innovations. The country was doing fantastically. Now we're uh, you know, a bunch of universal credit claiming more, you know, lower class beggars. And we need to change that. You know, we've got to stop putting the hand out and start getting out and up in the morning and doing a bit of work. You know, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, have you, you always life. been a kind of six in the morning man? You know, obviously, you know, we're, we're blessed to be up at that time in the morning. We're blessed to be alive. And are you and still you know, dawdling about around midnight the next night? Oh, always. Always, you know, we should every minute of every day we should we should embrace. So you get by on about five or six hours sleep. Yeah, I mean, why why would you need longer? Absolutely, no, no. I would lie in your bed. You know, other countries, there's people sitting there, you know, without anything, without you know, we talk about power here, electricity. You know, the thing is that with with people here, they get everything for nothing. You know, if you're in India right now. You'd be out begging to, you know, you'd be scrubbing shoes, you'd be doing, you know, a multitude of jobs. The difference is these people do it. Unfortunately, you know, we've got a lot of strikes right now, you, as you know. And, um, you know, I would just be, I'd be calling everybody up in Universal Credit and have them out there sweeping streets. I'd have them, you know, delivering parcels. I would make them earn their keep. Because basically, you know, I don't say I own these people, but essentially at the end of the day, I'm paying for them. I should, have a, I should be a judgment and ability to decide what they're doing. And, uh, you know, I don't want to drive past these schemes and uh, they're all sitting there, you know, drinking hot chocolate, watching satellite television. They should be out there just literally, you know, delivering post up at 5 a.m. Doesn't matter, it's frosty. You know, it's uh, just get out there, get some gloves on, a wheelie hat, and do your bit for your country. Because, to be honest, I'm actually getting sick of pain for these people. You know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's becoming, it's becoming laughable. I well, I can see like, where you're coming from, Jonathan, in that, I mean, I'm a five in the morning guy, <laughs> and I'm off out to work every day, and have been since I was 12. Exactly, you know, I think people don't do should be ashamed of themselves. You know, I wonder yeah. if we need to change employment law so that youngsters can start getting proper jobs. I mean, I had quite a responsible job for a 12-year-old. Okay, it was a, a Saturday and a holiday job, but it was quite responsible. So there was no nonsense. Exactly, exactly. Um, I, I started eight years old. Uh, wow. Um, and were you like me, Jonathan, they just, you found that you got a bit more pocket money than you would have got at home? Oh yeah, you know, I, I looked out and, you know, I seen the opportunity, I had a paper round, I delivered cards, I cut grass, I done whatever it took. At the end of the day, you know, people say to me, oh, you're very really lucky to have that. And I say, no, I worked for it. Yeah. And that's the difference. You know, we can all do it. Everybody's given the same amount of time in a day. There are an awful lot of people right now that have just sat about watching telly, moaning about how bad the country so is. So do you think, think the Scots have gone into a lazy mode? It's, it's a disaster. It's a disaster. You know, 
I, I would, um, you know, we need to, I think we'll bring back something like national service and have, you know, anybody that's 18 plus, you know, doing two years of maybe, you know, understanding how life should be, how you contribute to yourself, to your family and to your country. Um, don't have them out there drinking and taking drugs and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's, this is the problem. There's too many people giving too much money and, uh, you know, as I say, I'm, I'm sick of paying it. You know, I, I would like a, you had like a nicer car. You know, I'm paying huge amounts of tax for these people. So, you know, it's, it, it gets pretty frustrating. Absolutely. And I think also, I mean, there's no better sight. Harry Lauder, you think it was, used to say, there's no better sight than a Scotsman on the make. Oh, exactly. You know, I think that everybody, you know, these people don't understand how lucky they are. You know, to wake up, you know, I heard somebody I was in a supermarket and they said, oh, you know, I can't afford these cigarettes. And I said, you shouldn't be allowed to have cigarettes. You know, if maybe, I would have, I would have maybe some sort of system where if you're on universal credit, you can't smoke, you can't drink, you can't, you can't buy, like, satellite telly. You can't have these luxuries. And they're not luxuries, they just cost me more money in tax than the NHS, but you can't have these things. Well, I think it's that different. might be coming, Jonathan, because there's murmurs about bringing in digital currency, and that would give the currency people some sort of control over ordinary people's money. Well, yeah, I mean, listen, they need it. You know, you look at some people, and I don't know if it's due to the internet, but people just seem to get a bit more that is stupid, essentially. You can't make decisions for themselves. Well, I'll don't tell you what we need to put a stop to. I don't know if you've ever heard of this auditing business. I think it's an English thing. And it's, yeah, it, it's just kind of unemployed layabouts going about uh, for a, for a, a certain um, internet provider and they're, they're cheeking up to the police. Yeah, you know, these people, they contribute nothing. They want to, you know, you take advantage of the lax laws we've got in this country. And I, uh, I think we need to bring, we need to tighten the law. We need to have total respect for the police. We need to bring back the birch for these people. Okay, clearly, you know, what I would do is I would take the camera off them, turn it around on them. First thing you do, take the camera off them, you turn it round, and you say, yeah. don't don't speak back to me. There's a police, you say, don't ever speak back to a police officer. And then you arrest them yeah. right away for hostile reconnaissance, and then they have to the onus is on them. And if they cheek up to a policeman, that policeman gets the full backing of the police federation to take that person, run them through the court, and give them a jail sentence. Exactly. You know, I, I would maybe just give them 10 lashings to their name and say, this, if this is for your audience, yes. and you want to show, you know, show your audiences, let's see how you like it when you know, the police officers have got a tough enough job as it is. Yes. You know, and these idiots. So, again, so bring out the cat thing. of nine tails and actually do it on the internet provider. Exactly. You know, it should be demonetized. They should not be allowed any money at all from MD. And, uh, you know, they, they should just shut the channels down because they're just, you know, they're just parasites. Yes. That's what they are. Yes. Uh, and, you know, people would watch them and support them. And no, no, no. Say, these are, these are half-wits. You should never, ever, ever support half-witted people like that. Exactly. Shocking. And as for, as for their human rights, they've forfeited them by cheeking up to our police. Exactly. You know, they do, they do the police, you know, I've never seen them take on sort of private businesses. You know, businesses that are working hard, employing people, and they're having a tough time due to the recession. And they're out there with these cameras in their faces saying, you know, that, that tile there's cracked and, you know, the fence needs a new bit of fence and just abusing Well, I, I think what we need to do is that there should be a police unit for them, an anti-auditor police unit, and uh, get them all in the slammer and, or as you say, get the cat and nine tails out. Cats out the bag. That's where that came from. Jonathan, I'm going to have to dash. What a joy to hear from you, though. It's always an interesting call. Okay, have a fantastic evening. And you, sir, and dinky do. Dinky do, bye bye. Bye bye now. That's uh, our Jonathan. Jonathan is a very, very wealthy entrepreneur, and I know it won't be everybody's cup of tea. Chelsea says, How do I ring? Chelsea, you ring on 0141 628 9795.